Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Clips Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the Storm Collectibles Ultra Street Fighter 4 Evil Ryu. Today, I'll be reviewing this figure in the following categories. Accessories, articulation, design, is it essential to your collection, functionality, and price. Once those scores are totaled, I give you my opinion if this figure is a pass or a purchase. So for accessories, this is what I'm used to when it comes to Storm Collectibles. A variety of heads, hands, and effect pieces. It does come with a stand that I don't have up there. First thing that I'll show is Ryo comes with several headband options. I'm going to leave these in the bag. And starting out with the head sculpt. So we get three in total. Let's just zoom in here. Focus, focus. Just take a look at that. I really like the yellow eyes. The eyebrows look a bit funny. Pretty good facial expression here. We do see some features in the cheek. Not too bad. So we go from angry to angrier. And not really seeing a lot of expression here. There is some, however, this is one of my common complaints with Storm Collectibles. Anytime you're going to get a a head sculpt that's such expressive, I really want to see more definition in the face. So we received four pair of hands in total. Ryo here is wearing gloves, which look very good. You can see that if we can focus, there is some scope work around the gloves. You can see hair, I really like that. It carries over there. The fingers look a bit beat up and ugly. Really like how the hands look themselves. Quick look at the end pieces of the bandana itself. They're pretty jagged. And they're very pliable. So we also get what I'm going to say are flame effect pieces that go around Ryu. Done pretty well. And then we get the Hadouken. Maybe it was a different name for this one. Done in purple. You can see sort of the energy coming off of it. I'm really digging how this looks. So for overall accessories, I'm very satisfied. I'm going to give Ryu a 10 out of 10. So for articulation, Ryu is able to look up that much, which is great. As the neck moves independent from the head, he's able to bury his head down that much, turn side to side, and you get a good amount of pivot. And the head does shift back and forth. The arm kicks out that much to the side. It does fully rotate. You have an upper bicep cut. Double jointed elbows bending in that much. The wrists are on a ball peg so you get to turn them the way you need to. And you have a butterfly joint collapsing that far in that much out. So with the torso, sort of my favorite, you have a A and B portion just using the floating part. Ryo was able to crunch forward that much. Backwards barely any. You do have some rotation and a good amount of pivot. Using the combination of the two, Ryo was able to crunch forward that much all the way backwards. Great rotation as well as pivot. The legs are able to kick all the way out to the side. Go vertical that much, which should have been a bit more range there. Able to go way back. You do have rotation. Next point of rotation will be at the foot. The foot is able to collapse down that much. Forward, go up, not that much. Good pivot inside, outside, as well as toe articulation. Oh, forgot to mention with the bandana, you can rotate it if needed. And then there are several options, so you can sort of get the desired effect that you want. Nearly forgot, knees are double jointed, bending in about that much. So when it comes to articulation, this thing is articulated beautifully, especially the head, the torso, and the arms. There is some limitation in the legs. So for overall articulation, I'm going to give Ryu a 9 out of 10. So for design, take a look at this thing. I'm not even sure where to start. Maybe his gi is a good area. But if you look, the plastic is tattered and torn. And you can see this up top more so than down below. But you can see the subtle shading here it is really prominent on the inside around the tear coming down harder to see on the legs but I assure you that the legs are shaded and just the wrinkles the scope work really looks phenomenal 
really like the skin tone that they went with with Ryu. And speaking of skin tone, let's look at this hair. So looking at this part here, the mark left from the South Sway Hanada, man, this thing looks remarkable. They could have simply painted this, but nope, it's sculpted. You can see it tearing through the outer side of the breast. And really the inside, it looks nearly translucent. Not sure what this is, but it really looks good. And if you turn him to the back, you have a Kenji symbol meaning heaven. And this thing also looks remarkable. It appears that part of it is translucent. I, I won't say that for sure. You have paint on the outside, the yellow coming through. The only thing that would have made this better if it had a light up feature. This thing looks phenomenal and Storm did one hell of a job creating this. And coming to the face sculpt, this looks like Evil Ryu. The yellow in the eyes, playing it so clean, and you can see the red just showing around them. Really like how we get that Akuma hair, that spiky red. Wow, this, this figure looks like he jumps right out of the game. I, I don't think that they could have done a better job with this. So for overall design, I'm going to give Ryu a 10 out of 10. So is Evil Ryu a Central to your collection? If you can see me now, I'm scratching my head because I really don't know how to explain this. So Evil Ryu first appeared in Street Fighter 2 Alpha, which was supposed to be a prequel, if I'm not mistaken, to Street Fighter. And the character Evil Ryu has always been a what if. Like what if the Sosa Sway Hanada would have taken over? Very similar to Marvel What If. But then there's a version to where, I don't know, is it a demon that comes out of Ryu and now the demon is in a game and that's the South Sway Hanana itself? I, I, I'm confused. If you're confused, I'm confused. Now, as far as action figures, Storm Collectible gave us a version of Evil Ryu maybe two years prior. This is by far the superior version. This is the one to where Capcom did the redo of Ryu. This is the figure that you want. Aside from this one, I don't think we have another toy company that made a version of this Evil Ryu. So as far as being a central to your collection, I don't think Evil Ryu for the Street Fighter mythos is an essential character. Not even sure if he's really canon. So as far as being a central to your collection, I'm going to give Evil Ryu a 7 out of 10. So for functionality, Ryu clearly passes the stand test. Let's go ahead and take this head scope off. With my Storm Collectibles, I usually pinch the neck, then pull the head, as sometimes the ball peg or dumbbell gets stuck in the head itself. So we're going to go ahead and put on the last of the head sculpts. I want to go ahead and show the ribbons or bands, whatever you want to call this. You receive several of them. There's a peg which... Go ahead and you can push in the back of his head. This is pretty cool as it allows Ryo to have sort of windswept down, etc. I'm always scared of that soft plastic sort of breaking off. Fortunately, Storm Collectible has given us several. Let's talk a little bit about the gi. If you want to, you can actually pull it all the way down and have Ryo completely bare chest. Pretty simple to do so as this part is a separate piece and it's very easy well don't know how you would get it completely off but you can have this part pulled down i'm not going to go ahead and take it off i want to talk about some of the engineering with storm collectibles here we have a true butterfly joint you actually get it to collapse in and i really love their dual torso we see that with some new storm collectible figures it's singular we'll talk about that uh once i have reviewed one of those uh figures so Ryu comes with several accessories. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's pop the hand off. Easy enough to do so. I think I just dropped the band. I did. Let's go ahead and put it back around his arm. So with the fire pieces, pretty simple to figure out how they go. The smaller piece, you want to take the hands off first, place it up like so, and then go ahead and place the hand back on. We're going to do the same for the other side. I'm just going to swap out this hand with a different hand. So I went ahead and popped that on. We're going to go ahead and throw in another hand. You see the massive pegs which I love just go ahead and push the hand on like so easy enough and you can just sort of move these they will stay on their own you don't have to worry about them falling down so let's go ahead and put on the flame pieces for the feet I'm assuming it's the same way I think it's supposed to go upwards okay there we go let me do the same for the other side okay 
with the fire on all his limbs. Let's go ahead and put on the last remaining piece. Not sure exactly how this goes. I'm just gonna work it like this. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool now that I'm looking at it. As I'm assuming the flame is tearing through the ghee itself. Man, take a look at that thing. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. So, continuing on with Ryu's ghee, it is very pliable. If you push this part up, you can see that you can actually get the leg extended a lot further. So for the final accessory, I don't know what I did with the stand. really don't feel like looking for it. But there is a hole in the bottom of this. You essentially plug the stand in like so, and you can get Ryu to replicate a, a Dukin. So Ryu has specific hands that allows him to shoot the Hadouken, the hands that are positioned this way. I still can't find the stand, but just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like. And I just want to show you the figure for a moment. Here's where this toe articulation really comes in handy. So for functionality, the accessories work well. The display, it's not really a display stand, but the stand for the effect serves it per, its purpose. I'm saying I don't know where it is. I actually just seeing it. I'm using it to level out my camera uh, tripod. The gear is soft and pliable. The figure moves the way that it needs to to get it in the poses that you need it to. Uh, so as far as overall functionality, I'm going to give Ryu a 10 out of 10. So for pricing, Evil Ryu comes in at $90. That's before taxes. That's before shipping. Add in the two, you're looking at a price point of roughly $105. So now is Evil Ryu worth the price of admission? So let's see what he comes with. In terms of accessories, he comes with a lot. You get three head portraits, which are each unique. You receive effect pieces to replicate flames, which looks very good. And of course you receive the Hadouken, one of Ryu key moves. Aside from the accessories, you receive such a well-balanced action figure. This is certainly one of Storm Collectibles' best releases of the year. So anytime it comes to pricing a 6 to 7 inch action figure at $100, I'm always sort of gritting my teeth. However, when you look at import companies, that's typically what they're selling their figures for. It affects figures price around $100. And in my opinion, those figures do not have the quality of these figures. So while I would like to see this scored a little bit lower, I'm factoring in, we can say it's rivals, it's competition, price increases. So for pricing, I'm going to go ahead and give Evil Ryu a 10 out of 10. That would give Evil Ryu a cliff score of 56 out of 60. So now is Evil Ryu a pass or a purchase? This figure is not canon. But you want this figure. You need this figure. If you collect Storm collectible characters, why wouldn't you want an evil version of Ryu? This is an absolute purchase. All right, so here's Evil Ryu by itself. I'll be sure to throw in a lot of figures to give you an idea of size, but I'm going to start with some figures I have laying around. I'm going to go ahead and throw in Super 7's Donatello Leonardo. Next to that, I'm going to throw in... Goliath from Gargoyles. Let's remove Goliath. All right, here is Jaga from Thundercats. That Kate, man. All right, there's Jaga. All right, let's remove Leo and throw in Sabretooth. When you look at it like that, it's like maybe these can fit in with my Marvel Legends. Until you throw in Magneto and you're like, nah, that can't work. All right, Magneto's going to fall, so I'm just going to hold him. Let's remove these two and let's throw in some Storm figures. Let's go ahead and throw in Kung Lao, which I should be reviewing pretty soon. And here's Ori from King of Fighters. Oh, so happy to add this figure to my collection. Let's remove these two. All right, Mortal Kombat Shao Kahn. Let's get rid of him. Let's 
Throwing Street Fighter E Honda. Let's take him away. Throwing Street Fighter's Alex. All right, let's get rid of him. And lastly, let's throw in Dimitri from Darkstalkers. I wanted to throw in Kazuya from Tekken, but I can't get my hands on it. So thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. I hope to see you during the next review.